Welcome to Star Citizen and the three-part XXL mining guide. In this XXL guide, we go into detail about all areas of ship mining in Star Citizen from version 3.19 onwards. Both absolute newcomers and beginners as well as experienced veterans will find a wealth of important and useful information, tips and everything they need to make a career in mining or become even more effective in the seven different chapters. In the first of the total of three parts of the guide, we first go into all the important basics for beginners and returning players, as well as all the equipment for ship mining, and give you recommendations for various scenarios along the way. In the second part, you will learn everything about the different mining techniques and the variety of tips and tricks, such as a whopping 50% more cargo capacity for the prospector, or how you can easily adjust and secure various modules in the field. And in part 3, you will learn everything about the refinery process, all resources and how to find them, as well as how to safely sell your goods. Chapter 1. The Basics of Ship Mining Once you are in your mining ship, you can send out a scanner ping on planets, moons or asteroid fields by pressing the tap key. You will then receive various signature hits displayed as dot-shaped symbols, if there are hit signatures within your range. Now, all you have to do is turn the ship in the corresponding direction and fly towards one of the signatures, whereby you can keep sending new impulses with the tap key in order to verify the location. If you are in the direct vicinity of a signature, you can switch to mining mode with a standard M key, after which a special mining scanner automatically scans the mineable targets in front of you. All you have to do is point a crosshair at the deposit and fly to it at a sufficient distance. The distance to your target will be displayed in a semicircle on the far left, and we will try to fly as close as possible to an optimal range. A little further inside on the left you will find your flight information, such as speed and thrust. To start a mining process, activate your laser with the left mouse button. You will find all information about the mining process on the right side in the semicircle. Your currently selected laser energy is shown in the bottom right hand corner, and the stone's charge energy level is shown in the inner semicircle. You can vary your laser energy by holding down the left ALT key and using the mouse wheel. The aim now is to bring the charge energy into the green optimum range and hold it there until the range is completely filled and the stone breaks open. You should urgently avoid overloading the red range, as considerable damage to your ship or equipment is to be expected here. If you were able to break open the stone, you will find various fragments, some of which have a purple border, indicating that you can suck them directly into your hold by activating the collection mode of your laser with the right mouse button. However, not every material is lucrative or useful to take with you, as your cargo space is initially limited to 32 cargo units. To do this, we scan the individual fragments again to determine their composition avoiding inert materials, worthless space junk. Furthermore, the color marking in the detail scan shows us directly how easy or difficult it is to mine our target with the current equipment. Especially when entering the mining mechanics, you will quickly come across resources that you can't mine with the standard equipment or only in exceptional cases. Here we need a different loadout, so a different mining laser and special modules and gadgets which we will introduce to you in detail in the next chapter. However, we need quite a bit of investment capital for new equipment, which is why we first fill our cargo hold completely in order to have a startup capital available. For this, we have a display at the bottom right about our current cargo volume, whereby we are completely filled at 32 SCU standard and start the journey to one of the various refinery stations in order to be able to sell the material directly there. And the locations of all refinery stations, which can be found all over the Stanton system, can be found, for example, on SC Trade Tools. Alternatively, we can use the interactive map on seastone.space. You can find both links in our Discord or in the video description. And advanced miners will of course learn everything about the various bonuses of the individual stations, all the differences between the refinery methods, the advantages and disadvantages, a price overview, as well as our recommendations and tips and tricks for the refinery process in the third part of the guide. However, we recommend that beginners first sell the collected raw materials directly and risk-free in order to build up an initial capital stock. 
You have now successfully completed our introduction to ship mining and we come to the second chapter. Chapter 2 Mining Equipment and Recommendations First of all, we would like to thank Averkus Wolf for his extensive and detailed mining sheet, in which you can find all the data on the subject and which you will also find as link in the video description. The table serves as a basis and we will first go into all size 1 mining lasers. In addition to the standard arbor laser, which is absolutely sufficient for the beginning and can also be upgraded to a limited extent with a module, the Helix laser is currently recommended, as it offers by far the greatest performance and has two module slots. However, it is the most expensive at 100,000 alpha UEC and struggles with a reduced green window and a dangerous closed range. A cheaper, recommendable alternative is the Hofstad, which offers an enormous plus on the green window, but only one module slot and also has noticeably less power. And for more sensitive miners, we can also recommend the Lanst, which is also cheap and has good performance. However, this reduces the green window considerably and also offers only one module at a medium range. And since the topic of mining equipment and loadout often borders on questions of faith, these are our recommendations. There are of course others, which can also lead to success. In the area of modules, we distinguish between passive ones, which offer permanent bonuses, and active ones, which offer between 3 and 10 applications and are then used up and have to be renewed. In addition, there are gadgets that have to be attached manually to the stone to be mined, but can be collected afterwards and used again. In the area of passive modules, we recommend primarily the Rigor, Focus or XTR for the presented lasers, if possible in the largest version for maximum bonus. The Rigor currently has a bug in version 3, which is why we are only using version 2 for the time being. As active modules, we recommend the Surge, Lifeline or Stampede, and as gadgets, the Sabir, Waveshift or Optimax. The aim is to be able to react to as many different conditions as possible, which is why we use different modules and gadgets, which we can exchange and adapt directly on site thanks to the hot swap option. All details on this and a step by step guide for exchanging and adapting your equipment in the field can, of course, also be found in the second part of the XXL mining guide. Chapter 3 Loadout Recommendations the first recommendation is aimed at beginners who want to upgrade their standard prospector with the Arbor Laser, where we use a Rigor module, as well as optionally an XTR, an Active Search and a Waveshift gadget. With a maximum of 58,000 alpha UEC for everything, the upgrade is quickly earned and allows stones up to around 7,000 mass to be easily cracked with average resistances. Advanced users looking for powerful performance use the Helix laser with the Rigor and Focus module and add an optional Active Search and Waveshift gadget. 180,000 alpha UEC investment they may not be cheap, but they can be used to crack rocks beyond the 15,000 mark. Also for advanced but absolutely sensitive miners is the Lance laser with the Rigor module as well as optionally the XTR and Active Search and the Waveshift gadget for 82,000 alpha UEC investment. Large chunks are also feasible here, but a good server and a steady hand are prerequisites. Finally, a tip for experienced miners with the Jumpy Hofstad laser, a Riga module and optionally the Focus, an Active Search and the Sabir gadget. Investment costs 86,000 alpha USC and here stones around the 12,000 mark are well doable. But even the best equipment is of no use without the right technique, which we will go into the second part of the three-part guide, as well as various tips and tricks, the module change, 48 SCU cargo capacity and much more. See you soon!